Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome in to Camwood Live. It is Thursday. Hope you're all doing well. We've had another great week. Hope you have done the same. And um, as always, we're excited to be back. We're excited to have you guys in today. Um, all of you that have joined us before, welcome back. To those of you that may be new, welcome in. Basically, what this is, is an opportunity for you guys going through the program or your kids going through the program. Um, it's an opportunity for you to come in and ask us questions, any questions that you have in regards to the 30-day program, or the 30-day program, or any other programs that are related to Camwood, the Camwood infield program as well. Um, any of those, if you have questions on those, now's the time to ask. I'm mute. Can you with us today? Yeah, you're unmuted. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, you're good. It kept you unmuted. <clears throat> um, for those questions, you can type those in the chat box or you can raise your hand. We'll unmute you and we'll kind of hash it out through audio. Um, it's early March, but getting towards the middle. So baseball, softball season um, for those states that are playing softball in the spring are getting ready to kick off if they haven't kicked off already. Um, hearing a lot of good results from our players, from uh, kids that train with us, kids that train with the program. Um, and as always, I mean, the results are, are not changing. They are consistent and kids are improving their game and improving their ability as a hitter um, every single day with this program. So again, like we've said, if you have questions, now would be the time to ask. All of the folks that have seen the results um, that you want to see, have seen them by asking questions, uh, by getting answers for things that they don't understand or misconceptions that they may have. If something wasn't explained as well to you, um, now would be a great time to get that explanation. So feel free, guys. We're opening up the floor to you. And um, for the next few minutes, it's going to be all you. We still have some folks joining us as well. How's the uh, that player that you've been working with doing? What's I think his name's Gage. Gage, he's doing good. Um, it's consistent. Not really took off yet, but again, I think a lot of that has to do with um, experience early in the year, first year high school ball, getting used to new pitching, new yeah. distances, things like that. Um, but as far as just the consistency, um, he's putting the bat on the ball consistently, making solid contact, and just kind of feeling his way through it. Like we always yeah. talk about, it's very good and very important that kids continue to do the drills, even though um, it is season, uh, even though maybe they've been through the program already and now they're, they're quote unquote done with it. Um, you're not necessarily done training as a hitter once you've been through that 30 day program. It's very imperative, very important that we continue to train with those drills, continue to warm up with those drills and use those drills when we have issues in our swing. Um, so that we can maintain a consistent swing throughout a full season. Yeah. So I know that's one of the big things is uh, obviously just don't get discouraged if you're not seeing the results that you wanted to at the beginning of the season. You know, I just – I talked to uh, Judd Fabian. And if y'all know who Judd is, he's one of the Camwood athletes. Uh, plays for the Florida All-American outfielder. And uh, I was talking to him in his, his first uh, couple series of the season. And, um, he's hitting the ball well. He's just hitting it like right at people, obviously. You know, he. So I saw somebody on top 10 plays got him on the corner track, dive and catch over the shoulder. There's crazy stuff like that's happening to him. So I just wanted to talk with him, make sure that, um, you know, he's – sorry, what's that? I'm screaming. That he's still sticking to, you know, wanting to stay inside the ball, not trying to pull everything. And – uh, talked to him that Thursday. They had a weekend series, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and he hit three home runs that weekend. So, you know, it's important to just stick to it, you know, maintain the mechanics of staying inside the ball, and the results will come. Like I said, we've we've done this program with way too many players now. I mean, it's a proven fact that if we do this program and we focus on the stuff we're trying to teach you, the results will come. So, yeah. I encourage you to get right off the roof. To start the season. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of times kids, they go through this program, they'll see the results off the tee, they'll see it in the cage, and they get to a game and 
they get frustrated when they're not seeing those cage-like results in a game right away. Um, just because this program is, is available does not take away um, the aspects of the game. There, it is a fact, folks, and you would, you would attest that some players naturally are better than others. Some players can naturally, I mean, take it and apply it and transfer it that quick better than others. That does not mean that your kid doesn't get it. That does not mean that the program doesn't work. It does not mean um, that your kid's no good. It means that your kid's just – he's got a little little bit bigger of a hill to climb. I mean, that does not mean that, again, like I said, the program does not work. We've done this with way too many kids um, to even, even think that that's a possibility. A lot of it, I think, has to do with what kids are judging their success off of. Um, I know me coming up – especially early in my career, early in high school, I was judging success based off of, I mean, my stat sheet at the end of the game, how many hits I had um, as opposed to how many at-bats I had. I mean, if I'm 0 for 4, it didn't really matter how I, how I got that 0 for 4. I, I was upset. I didn't have any hits. To me, that was a terrible day. Um, batting average is going in the tank, and it's just not productive. Um, and then, you know, the longer I go, the more, I mean, you kind of learn baseball and figure out how the game is. You're dealing with a game that 70% of the time, if you're a good hitter, 70% of the time you're going to fail. 30% of the time you're getting hit. So you're going to deal with failure so much more than you're going to deal with success. How we judge success is really going to determine how long these kids want to, want to play this game. If you start judging your success based off solid contact, how well you hit the ball, not regards to if it falls or if it becomes a hit, um, but just making solid contact. You can go 0 for 4 and hit four line drives, like Trey was saying, judge hitting balls off the warning track and folks are diving and catching them. Why would you be upset about that? There's nothing you can do about that. There's nine people standing on the field against you. So – if you hit the ball hard, you've won the day. You've won the, won the battle. That's success. If your kids are hitting it hard, don't let them get discouraged because their numbers ain't matching up yet. Numbers are going to match up. If you consistently hit the ball hard, you are going to be a good hitter over time. So just trust the process, stay in it, keep working at it, and take advantage of times like these. Ask questions if you have them. No questions coming through yet? Not right now. I got a question. Um, as far one. as the uh, – using the cam one off the tee and, like, soft toss, do you guys use it typically on front toss too when you're hitting? Yes, we do. Uh, we, we like to make sure that our kids are mechanically sound enough to take a wood bat and start putting it on swings and moving balls. Obviously, it's a wood bat. So, again, if, you're, if you consistently make contact off the end, if, I mean, if – your contact is not on the sweet spot. It's going to affect the bat. So make sure their mechanics are there. Otherwise, we trained with this. I mean, Trey trained with this in BP off the pitching machine in college, throwing, I mean, 80, 90 miles an hour. So it's as solid of a stick as you can get. Use it just like you would any other wood bat, um, and, and you're going to see a tremendous improvement. That's what I always tell people is it's a normal wood bat. So, I mean, if you, you can use it just like a normal bat. You know, like I said, I used to use it all the time during BP off machine, all that stuff. But I was a lot more consistent with barreling the ball up too. So, I mean, just like any other wood bat, if you go out there and hit end, it's liable to break. If you get jammed, it's liable to break. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would make sure the mechanics were good and that we're consistently barreling the ball up before we transition into a moving ball with the cam wood. If you don't want it, obviously, if you don't want it to break. You know, we have a we'll have some customers buy a cam wood and then for, right when they first get them, go out there and hit off the machine and it breaks. And it's like, well, I mean, it's a wood bat. It, it happens. So, yeah, um, you know, I would make sure the mechanics are good before transitioning to the moving ball. Cool. Thanks. Do you guys have the insider tees back in stock or no? Yes, we do. They're we on do. our website. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah, thank sir. you. Absolutely, man. Any other questions, guys? Very good. <laughs> that's that's one that we get. That's one we get all the time too. I mean, 
questions about, I mean, the bat being used in BP and things like that. And, I mean, it's like we say, it's, it is a wood bat, folks. It's wood. So, I mean, use as, as you want to. But make sure your mechanics are there so you're, you're getting the most out of the bat. And yeah. you're not just uh, taking hacks just to take hacks at a ball that's not sitting still. A lot of kids get bored with the tee and they want somebody just to throw it at them, and that's that's not good. <laughs> Any others, guys? <coughs> uh, I'm curious. Do we have any uh, parents of softball players in here today? If so, how many? Let me know. I've noticed I've taken softball lately. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's something else too. A lot of folks ask us. I mean, um, Danny's a so, uh, he's in softball. Very good. A lot of folks ask. I mean, is this is the, does this concept transfer? Is this the same program for baseball as it is for softball? Yes. Um, we're taking a round ball and a round bat and trying to hit it square. So, concept is the same. Moving in a straight line. We got to stay inside. Got to line the barrel up. We want to maximize our opportunity. Um, so it does not change. We do not teach it any different as opposed to a baseball player to a softball player. I always say a swing is a swing. It's the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I say whenever, even whenever I've taught this to softball players, I mean, I could argue my softball players. <laughs> yeah. No, but every softball girl that I've worked with with this program has just torn the cover off the ball. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I the softball player I have, she's hurt right now. But when she's healthy, I mean, I'd put her up with any baseball player that that I know in Cairo. I mean, she can hit. She can flat hit. and she, I mean, she can do it with a wood bat. I mean, cam wood bat, 271, sweet spot bat, game bat, whatever. Hand it to her, put a ball on the tee, throw one to her, she can hit it. So it does work across the board. Um, here's a comment or here's a question. Well, we are doing the 30-day All-American program. It's going good. Our little league season is starting, and I've been noticing my son hitting a lot of balls off the end of the bat. Uh, what can we do? <coughs> Excuse me. The first guess right there, if he's hit the ball off the end of the bat in games, he, his approach is probably more to the pool side rather than to the opposite field. Um, I would kind of start there really making sure that he's – trying to drive the ball the other way. Um, kids are naturally going to react to an inside pitch. They have to trust that. It obviously takes time for them to do that, but if they trust that they won't, they'll be able to hit the inside pitch better than they think. If they can gear up and have an approach to go the other way, it's going to allow the ball to travel, get a little bit deeper in their stance to where the contact point is more at a, I mean, a solid place rather than them reaching out front or the barrel's already been through the zone and now it's on its way out and they're getting contact off the end of the bat. So my first first thing would be to address his approach. Ask him what he's thinking at the plate, um, what's he trying to do, and then gearing toward focusing on looking for a fastball, middle, out, outer third, and driving it hard to right center if he's right-handed, left center if he's left-handed. Yeah, like I said, if he's hitting the ball at the end of the bat a lot, it's likely because the front shoulder's flying out too. And like you're saying, that front shoulder flying out could be the cause from trying to pull everything because mm -hmm. they're trying to hit it. So they have to get everything going in motion and then they pull off, causing the butt or the uh, weak contact off the end of the bat. So, like Jonathan said, the easy fix to that is to focus your approach oppo. That way you're staying on that pitch, you're not pulling off of it. So, if we're focusing on fastball the way to drive it to the opposite field, and we get that pitch, we're able to drive it. But if it's thrown inside, all we have to do is just react and rotate the lower half a little bit more, keep the hands inside, and drop it to the left center field. So, um, like you said, if if he's hitting the ball at the end of the bat a lot, it's likely because that front shoulder is flying off and not staying inside the ball. Yeah, very good. Hope that helps you, Colin. Um, another question here: Would there be any reason you couldn't use the bat with pitching machine dimple balls? Um, no, no reason at all. Dimple balls are obviously a little bit softer than baseballs. Um, I don't know if I, we've ever had a, a bat with any issues off of dimple balls. So, again, I've been, like, like we said with baseball, it's a wood bat. But, again, have good mechanics and swing it. I mean, use it to train. Train your entire swing. I mean, in all aspects, T-work, front toss, soft toss, 
BP, pitch machine, work your way up to where you could swing that cam wood in a game situation if you had to. There's nothing better than having um, being able to handle a bat of that size with a pitch moving at a high velocity, and then legally you can use a lighter bat in the game. That brings so much confidence to you. Um, so use those bats, I mean, in all facets for sure. Um, right here, somebody says, uh, my daughter's 12 you working on the 30 day program. I believe she benefited from this program. She did home, uh, she hit some home runs and triple last couple of tournaments. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, obviously results speak for themselves um, and contact will too. I mean, even on, on the balls that they're making outs on, I'd be interested to know a lot of you guys' opinions on what you think their outs look like. How solid is the contact that they're making when they, when they don't get a hit? Um, that's where you can really see the difference and the improvement in their swing is because even when they miss, even when they're early or late, they're crushing that ball or they're getting good, good wood on it, good barrel on it. Danny, uh, Danny, you're having issues with your, uh, looks like your ball set on your tee. Um, email us at customer support, support at camwoodbats.com. And, and we can take care of that for you, man. Make sure you send us your order number as well so we can pull that order up. Chad um, asking about his son. He started his season, plays tournaments three weekends a month, practices two times a week. I also started a 30-day program and he's on day three. I'm curious if doing this program while he's playing is less beneficial. Um, Absolutely not. I, I mean, honestly, the program is never going to not be beneficial for your kid. If they allow their mind, for example, obviously when they're doing the program, they're having to think about a lot of things, thinking about their stance or setup, driving the bat or the knob in the right direction, staying loose, all that stuff. When they get into a game, they don't need to be thinking like they were on the tee. They need to just let it be what it's going to be. Um, again, you said – I don't think he said how old he was, um, but if he's a younger kid, I mean, especially, don't overload them with too much in their head. Go through the program during season. Don't wear him out, but go through the program. Talk about the different aspects that are being taught and allow him to work through it himself with you there with him if that's what you're doing. And then when he gets to the game, just really harp on seeing the ball good and staying inside. See the ball and drive your hands inside. That's really all you want to focus on in a game. And the program won't have any issues or any effect on – negative effect on, on his season. If anything, it's going to make it better. Yeah, so the, the program teaches the number one key to hitting, which is staying inside the ball. So all the drills that we have inside the program are teaching that one concept, stay inside the ball. So um, the more that the program, the more he does the drills, the more consistent he gets with driving his hands inside the ball – hitter he's going to be because obviously when you drop your hands inside the ball he's going to start barreling up the ball a lot more because your timing doesn't have to be perfect in order for you to uh, make consistent contact so the program is going to help him regardless whether it's in season or off and like even with me I did these same drills no matter what during the season like every day before practice or games I was in there doing these drills and it's just to reinforce and to teach myself staying inside the baseball so it shouldn't be any issues at all with him doing this during the, uh, during the season. Like Jonathan said, a lot of our kids that do it, they even see more results, especially if this is his first time going through the program, mm -hmm. you're going to increase his bat speed and power pretty quick. So that's where you're going to see the biggest difference with the power increase, I would say, over the next uh, couple of weeks while he goes through it. But no issues at all doing it during season. Um, Adam here says my two boys are enjoying the program or enjoying the Camwood. I know they're skeptical parents who don't understand it. They think that the swing rail um, is the same thing. I don't know much about the swing, what, the swing rail. Can you differentiate? Um, honestly, Adam, we don't – I mean, I know I don't. I don't know much about the, sw the swing rail either. I get tongue-tied trying to say it, the swing rail. Um, besides what I've seen through ads on Instagram and Facebook, things like that, I believe – Somewhat, the concept may be the same, 
Um, I can promise you that they're not going to see the exit velocity increases. They're not going to see the power increases and those improvements like you would with the cam wood because the swing rail does not add any more weight to what you're holding. It does not make um, the bat lighter. It does not put the weight in a different place to promote um, a real drive of the knob. You're more so just kind of pulling. I feel like at times if there's anything that may be negative about it, Again, I ain't saying there's anything negative about, negative about it. I've never used it. But all I can see is that it may have kids doing a lot more snatching with their body, trying to snatch it out of there, um, as opposed to using their hands. So, again, we can't really differentiate too much because we, I mean, like you, we don't know too much about it. We're obviously going to recommend cam wood because of the results that we've seen everybody have and what we've seen for ourselves. So I hope that helps kind of answer that question for you so i know the swing rail was trying to teach trying to teach staying inside the ball which is pretty much you know obviously what we're what we're teaching as well it's just a different going about doing it um i've never used it myself either so i can't really speak to it except for what customers have told us or have told me before because a lot of customers have gone from the swing where the swing jesus i'm with you on a tongue tied i'm telling you <laughs> They've gone from that to the cam wood process because it didn't work for them, whether it be because of the attachment or whatever. Uh, Cause I know you have to attach something to your arm with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people like that aspect of it, but I can't speak much to that product cause I've never tried it myself. But like I said, with the cam wood, obviously with the drills that come with our bats and we teach you exactly how to do it, we're teaching you the proper mechanics, um, you know, lower half, upper half, pretty much the mechanics of the entire swing. And on top of that, we're teaching you how to increase your bat speed and power. So um, in my opinion, we're light years ahead of them because we're, we're teaching you the full swing, um, not just the concept of staying inside the ball. Yeah, very good. Um, Danny, about your T-stem, uh, saying you keep screwing it on, but it's popping off again. Um, when, you, when you email us with that, he said that he's screwing it on, but it keeps popping off. So I'm assuming – I'm wondering if the threads are stripped. On hey, it the, might be. On the ball set. It could be um, stripped on the T-stem too, but um, just email us with your order number. Um, we can check into that order, and uh, if we need to, we'll send you a new T-stem as opposed to just a ball set. Um, and so if you would, send us some pictures of that so we can see kind of what, what we're looking at, if it is the, <laughs> the set or if it's the attachment <laughs> coming off the T-stem. Another question, my son's able to hit balls over second base head, right center field, but I noticed a lot of strong high pop-ups. Interested in what he's doing wrong mechanically to use to cause these pop-ups. Hit balls over the second base head, right center field, but I noticed a lot of strong super high pop-ups. Are you saying that the balls going to right center are very high pop-ups? Or are you asking, are you saying that he's hitting line drive that way and kind of pop-ups to the pull side? If he's popping seems like up, he's, seems like he's barreling it. the ball a lot, just under the ball, where it's causing a lot of back. But yeah, um, right there where Trey's going. I mean, that bat. All that's happening is the bat's getting, getting down back here. So now he's going like this through the zone, as opposed to this. Um, we've got to keep our hands driving forward, and not allow that bat to get heavy in that top hand. Um, hands drills are really going to fix that making sure that our bottom hand is driving down through the ball and not trying to swing up through it is going to help fix that. Um, but really that is the only, that's the issue right there. We see this a lot too with kids. I mean, that mechanically off a tee, you can't, you can't necessarily see it. You need a little bit of a, of a, of velocity to, to notice it. Um, but he's just missing this much underneath. We've got to get his shoulders from attacking this direction to get him more here. Boom. So now he's flatter through the zone rather, rather than being kind of steep up the hill through the zone. Go back to where I was. We got some questions in here now. Uh, Danny's 12 year girls team is making much harder contact both in hit and out. Very good. High school girls have up and down results. Um, 
in, just out of curiosity I, in, in high school players, which I, we deal with high school players too, we see this a lot. So that's one reason I'm bringing this up. Um, I think the high school players at times, they can be a little wishy-washy as to what they want to believe and what they don't want to believe. Um, sometimes they don't really fully buy into it up here. They can look like they do on the outside, but they haven't really bought into it up here. Um, and that's probably one of the main issues. Those kids like that, you're going to have to just kind of let them, I mean, be the death of themselves. And when they get to a point to where their way is not working and they cannot fix it, they'll be a whole lot more open to what you're trying to do. Um, again, teaching it to them anyways is not going to hurt because the Camwood, in my opinion, can trick a kid into doing it the way you want them to do it um, the longer they swing the bat. So I've, I'm not too shocked about your up and down results for the high school kids. I just harp on their mentality, on what they're focused on, how bad they really want to get better as a hitter. I know I was one of those kids that didn't want to pay attention to it and do it either. You know, like yeah, Frank. Just kind of go through it and do what they say, but not really do it. I mean, just kind of try to look like he did it. So Frank literally had to threaten that he was going to stop working with me because he could tell I wasn't trying to do what he was trying to teach me. Because I, I was still in high, in high school when I started this, I was still trying to pull everything. And literally, you know, Frank sat me down and said, I'm not going to work with you anymore if you keep doing that and t keep taking that approach at the plate. And that's what made me switch that conversation right there. Yep. Sometimes you just got to go there. Um, here's another one. My son is on day 18 doing great. 90% line drives to the back corner. When he grabs his game back, takes live BP right after T work. He really struggles even swings and misses occasionally, any suggestions? Um, my first thought on that, let's see if you told me how old he was. How old is he, Randy? I'm curious to know because um, my first guess would be that his mechanics have improved so much that he is, his swing is faster than the pitch that's coming to him. Um, what I mean by that is he's now moving his bat through the hitting zone so fast that he's in and out of there and pitch really ain't even there yet. His number one thing he's going to have to do is let the ball travel. A lot of times, I mean, that was one of my, my biggest keys that I told myself, especially in games, but even in BP, is to let the ball travel. I'm not really doing myself any good if I'm reaching way out there to make contact. I'm going to make a lot more solid contact when I have a little bit of connection in that front arm as opposed to being way out here. So – if he's swinging and missing in BP, it's probably because his swing is that fast. I mean, that's honest to goodness. His swing is that fast. I would have him slow it down, maybe start his load a little bit later um, in regards to when he's – when you're pitching in the ball or whatever it is, or overhand. Um, but truthfully, he's just got to let the ball travel a little bit more. Matt, and sorry, I had someone call me, so I don't know if you touched on this, Jonathan, or not. Um... But if he's hitting everything good off the tee and then once live arm come, is coming in and he's swinging and missing, I would do some uh, two and twos. I would do two and twos off the, uh, from the tee. So two swings off the tee and then two swings off of front toss. So I slow front toss. And then once I got consistent with that, I would do two and twos, two off the tee and then two BP speed. Um, just to marry those two together. We want to make sure that we're carrying those mechanics over from the tee to the moving ball. So not sure if you touch base on that or not, John, but that's something yeah, that's, that I would. I mean, I didn't. That's perfect. That's very good. That, that too, is, is huge. Um, question here from Danny again. What do we think about using the pro velocity bat along with the cam wood bat or with the cam wood bat? Um, pro velocity bat. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't I really know my feelings on it. It's, it's a weird, weird deal. Um, the weight slides on the bat. So basically, here's the handle. The handle stops, and right above it, there's this big, looks like one of those elongated donuts that you used to use back in the day. And it literally sits there, and when you swing, it slides from here to the end of the barrel. To me, that produces a real flicky swing, a little real wrist flickish swing. So basically where you're not really getting extension, you're more worried about the bat hitting the end of the stick, flipping around through the ball. Um, yeah, you're going to see some probably you're probably going to see some exit velocity increases, maybe. But again, I mean, I think you're almost. I mean, if if this is going to if this if one product is going to 
solve every issue that you have, I mean, at that point, I think you're just kind of looking for product. Pro velocity never... bat is, I mean, I've seen it's all over. It's all over Instagram. I mean, never... I haven't they... seen anybody that has convinced me that it is a it is a product that's making kids um, a more consistent hitter. I've seen a lot of people do. I mean, one guy that I watched talked about it. He saw it at the ABCA, and he was talking about literally using the bat to talk about how they teach a kid to check swing. Why in the world would I ever want to teach a kid how to check swing? I don't want him to check. I want him to freaking swing. I want that bat to go through the zone. If he knows what he's doing with the bat, then he really has no need to check swing. If he has a good lower half and he's firing with his lower half first, his hands are still back. He doesn't need to check swing. So, again, I think it's kind of somewhat counterproductive um, to what we're doing. I mean, we're teaching natural release. We want that bat to naturally do its job, and it will. Um, the pro velocity bat, I think, gets you into more of a forced um, whip through the zone. That's just, I mean, again, that's, that's oh, the IMO, in my opinion. The feel is so on it. Take it for what it's worth. That reminds I never me. Never held one in my hand. You remember, I think it was called the speed stick. <laughs> I, I had on one it. of them. It was a little PVC pipe looking thing, and it had a little red plastic piece. And basically, you just swung it, and you tried to make that thing hit <laughs> the end of the stick before. I mean, at, con at contact. And so, to me, you're forcing contact. You're trying to for. You're trying to be perfect. And why would you try to train to be perfect when in the game of baseball and softball, you're like never perfect? 70% of the time you fail. Why would you – kind of counterproductive. Again, I hope that – I'm, I'm not trying to be I mean, rude or anything like that. I'm just – that's honest opinion, y'all. That's my honest opinion. Um, another question here from Matthew, not a Camwood question, but do you find the blast sensor – to be a worthwhile tool. Um, Trey, you've probably used blast more than I have. I've never put one on a bat and used it, truthfully. I've just went old-fashioned radar gun, exit blast. Yeah, I mean, I've used it before. Um, not a ton, to be honest with you. Like I said, it's it tells you, like, your connection score, your swing scores and all that stuff. But the only issue that I have is, um, you know, who's the one that – who – Yeah, who said, graded that? <laughs> who's grading it? You know, who made the – 100 percent swing you know what i mean um mm -hmm. so because i've seen i know me and another player we were doing some hitting in the cage and i'm watching him hit he's dumping the barrel back here straight up through the zone hitting uh hitting ball straight up into the cage i mean he's not making good contact at all and the uh, blast was saying that it was a good swing because he was in the zone throughout mm -hmm. the swing but he was getting the barrel in the zone all the way back here I'm like, well, why would you ever want to do that? So I was with Frank, and Frank was like, do you mind if Trey takes a few swings? And so I got up there and uh, hit, you know, took four or five swings, smoked the ball. And that sensor, according to the sensor, his swing was better than mine. And I knew that that wasn't the case because the guy even said, he was like, I will trade swings with you right now. And um, this guy was a professional player. He was a triple-A guy with the – uh, with the Toronto Blue Jays and you know after he saw my swing he said that he would trade with me right now and that little blast said that his swing was better than mine and we knew that it wasn't because even afterwards Frank your swing was you know your swing in the zone way longer than his was so um I wouldn't be all gung-ho about the blast motion I wouldn't you know live and breathe by it but like I said it is good for certain things it's good to to see what your bat speed is, you know, it's good to see your progressions and stuff like that. But I wouldn't go gung ho with the overall swing score, to be honest with you, because I've seen some really swings that it has showed up that it was good according well, to a blast. I think, I think a lot of it has to go with making sure that you understand hitting zone. I mean, like you talk about the blast, the guy's swing, he takes one with a blast sensor and it says his bat was in the zone the maximum amount of time. I mean, yeah. the hitting zone is not behind me. I mean, if my barrel is ever behind me, I mean, on this side of my body, I'm not going to be strong. So why would I want to be that late? If I'm that late, I might as well miss. My contact ain't going to do me no good. I might as well take that pitch. So I'm not trying to get the barrel back here. I'm trying to get the barrel in the zone as opposed to the deepest part of contact. 
solid contact. Solid contact's off that front foot. If it gets deeper than that, I mean, you're really late. Um, you're your swing is – you're losing power. I mean, the ball's not going to go. And I'm, I'm telling you this from experience, folks. I'm telling you this. I mean, times on inside pitches that I'm trying to rotate in there and my bat's like this, I mean, that ball does not go anywhere. And I weighed 165 pounds, I mean, my senior year of college. So that does not help. We've got to really understand hitting zone, really understand where the hitting zone starts and where it finishes. Um, if you can understand that, then those sensors, the blast sensor, somebody in the next question here is asking about diamond kinetics. Um, those sensors, I think, would be a lot more beneficial to you because you wouldn't, you wouldn't just take it at its word. Like Trey said, he's seen a lot of blast sensors. I mean, a lot of swings that, according to the sensor, reads that it's a great swing. But, I mean, in the span of the concept of the game, their swing's not going to be in the way of that ball as long as they truthfully want it to be. Yeah, I was talking to Frank about, you know, Frank, Frank's old school. Oh, yeah, and he, he don't. Technology is stupid. He, and if I need a device to tell me if a swing is good or not, I need to retire. I need, I need to quit. Yeah, I need to quit. That's what he was saying. He's like, you know, we we can – like, even me, I, I have a trained eye for hitters now. Obviously, I've worked with so many players. I can visually see someone's issues. I don't need a device to tell me what it is. But I do like to, you know, strap the device on and see what it says versus what my naked eye says. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's – obviously, I mean, you're going to see improvement. I mean, you put the sensor on there when they start, and then when they finish, you're going to see bat speed improvement. Um, you're that probably going to see some fluctuation and some improvement in the actual launch angle of the swing. And if you understand launch angle, I mean, if you got a 20 degree launch angle, that ain't cutting it. That pitch is coming from the sky. I need to be more like that six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 launch angle, especially if I'm a baseball player. With a softball player, it may be a little bit flatter. So, I mean, make sure that we understand what those sensors are reading and we're not letting the sensor. Um, take advantage of us. I, I mean, I think those sensors can do that if we're not careful. It says our kids' oh. swings are great and they're not making any solid contact. Why in the world are they not? The sensor says it's great. I'll tell you, I was, when I was hitting with that Blue Jays player, he had the blast motion on the bottom of his bat. Every single swing he took, he looked at his phone to look to look at his numbers. Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, I, I can tell you with my eyes closed if I hit it good or if I didn't. <laughs> I mean, I, and how pretty good my swing was. I mean, it's a, it's feel, guys. It's so much feel. Um, moving on I down would, here. Go ahead, Trey. I was just saying I wouldn't let it take over your emotions and all that stuff, That's like right. I said. Yeah. Because the blast motion said it was a bad swing doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad swing. Because, um, mm -hmm. like I said, I, I've seen it the other way around many a time. So, the one thing, like, the we partnered with Blast Motion before on a uh, deal, couple, maybe yeah. like a year and the biggest thing that we saw, obviously, was just the bat speed increases on it. Um, you know, it, it meant hand speed, which is a good tool to have, obviously. It's good to see your progressions that way. So that was the main reason I wanted to partner with them. Is so during the program, our players could see their bat speed increases. Because obviously, that's yeah. what everybody want their bat speed and their power to go up. So yeah, that was the main reason. Not everybody's that. got, I mean, 500 bucks to go spend on a radar gun either. I mean, it's that's true, too. Those things like that are helpful, but don't, don't let them take advantage of you. Um, Chad mentioned here to piggyback on what Matthew said, basically the same question. Blast sensor, diamond kinetics. Like, like I said, I've never heard of diamond. I've heard of diamond kinetics, but I've never looked at it or used it. Um, so I'm just going to kind of leave y'all with that little dialogue for me and Trey and, and let y'all make that decision for yourselves. Um, again, we're not saying either one of them is wrong and that either one of them is bad. They are good tools. They can be very beneficial to you. Um, but make sure you're understanding uh, the knowledge and the importance of the statistics that they're showing you. Any other questions, guys? Very good. Goodness. Gosh, all these, all these tools, Trey. I know, there's a lot coming out now. Oh. There's a lot of them trying to copy us, too. <laughs> but... It is what it is. When you're successful, people are going to try to come get what you have. Zaxby's and Popeye's both sell chickens, don't we? Very good. It seems kind of like we're 
down to the end of everybody's tank. So if we don't have any more questions, we'll go ahead and wrap it up, guys. Um, obviously, we didn't mention this ahead of, or at the beginning, but we'll mention it now. If you're not involved or if you haven't joined the Camwood Discord uh, chat, make sure you go join the Discord chat. Um, a lot of you are already in there. So um, you can find that link inside of the Camwood program portal. And that's going to open up a lot more opportunity to speak with a lot more people besides just me and Trey. Uh, Wes Helms is in that group. Some of his guys are going to be in that group as well. Major League affiliated guys, things like that. Um, one more question came in right here. My son's a switch hitter. We purchased the program. Begin uh, starting the program on Monday. Dominant side is his left. Should he go through the fo program focusing on both sides or just the dominant side to start? Um, I would probably break it down and go dominant side and then go back through it and do non-dominant side. Um, mainly just because they have to be solid from one side, period. They can always quit hitting from the other side and still be a good hitter. Um, it's really hard if neither one of your swings is, is – if both of your swings is average. So we want to make sure that the solid side is better. Go through the program there, get that swing where you want it, then go back through the program on his weaker side and don't forget the dominant side. I would probably do some warm ups. I mean, 10, 12 balls of each drill with my dominant side and then do my non dominant side. So it will be a little more work for him just because he's a switch hitter, but I mean, that's, that's the sandwich he chose to eat on. And I'm I'm all about that. If kids want to tackle that, then go for it, man. Go for it. This program can help you do it. This program, I mean, can help you be a switch hitter. I know how I am. If I was seven years old, nine years old, found out about this, I'd have been a switch hitter now. Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah. The biggest issues with the switch hitters that go through this program is they see that there's you know a hundred swings for the day, so they do fifty left, fifty right. Mm -hmm. Dude, and they're kind to, of that, they're going to get mediocre results. I mean, that's the fact. fact. That's the whole thing is we're trying to build consistency and we're building that muscle memory. So, if they are a switch hitter and you're going through the program, you have to double up on the reps for the day. So it would be a hundred hundred swings for that day, a hundred left and a hundred right. So, like yeah. I said, it's going to require a little bit more work. But like I said, you're choosing to perfect two swings instead of one. So you got to put in the extra work. Absolutely. Very good. Very good, guys. We appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to us through the text hotline or email, um, Facebook, Instagram, any of our social media outlets. If you don't follow us on those, go do that uh, today. Um, you can find us, Camwood Bats, on all of those outlets, YouTube as well. And we look forward to seeing you guys right here next week on the Camwood Bats live session. Y'all have a great weekend. See you next time.